Hey, it's me, Shimmy from The Shimmy Show. What's good, people? I am back from the grave and basically have a lot to talk about. Waited a couple days for me to get this uh, microphone in the mail. One thing I've noticed is that people have a very difficult time listening to me in real life. And by the way, I do hope you guys can hear this as I pace around the house because I just have a lapel mic on and I'm mopping the floor and folding laundry and stuff right now. So hoping the audio is okay, you know, but this, 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 uh, this doing this show, this podcast or whatever, it actually is one of the few things that helps me to lower my blood pressures. Traditionally, my blood pressure has always been in the double digits because I run every day. I've been running every day since I'm like 15 years old. Very few exceptions to this. You know, I might have stopped for a short while when I got fat, but right back on the horse, right? So more or less, more than half of my life I've been running and I have a low BP. Currently, it's not back to baseline just yet. Um, I experienced my shit went up to like almost 240, the top number. Uh, Just for reference, stroke territory is 180, and I hit over 240 just a couple days ago. It's a miracle I'm actually doing this show right now. So I wanted to make sure that I order a microphone and make sure you guys could hear me loud and clear. I feel like uh, this, 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 this condenser mic, I wish I had this amplification in real life. You know, I want that thing that Dark Vader has, the little necklace thing where he just talks loud or whatever. Maybe then people would listen to me, you know, because I'm just really tired of people not listening to me. Even at the point of my near death and revival, just a couple of days ago, I didn't. I had both uh, 911 and paramedics. Neither one of them is listening to me, and it really, really frustrated me. You know, really did. I learned a lot about myself, uh, especially, you know, when you've been at death's door. You, I mean, that's really the truth. You never really know what you're gonna do or how you're gonna feel or whatever, right? One of the most interesting things I found out about myself is that even as I was dying, I was standing in line actually at a CVS, like pharmacy place. Um, my blood pressure is well over 200, but my pulse is still very cool. Like my heart is like cool through this whole process, like in the 50s, 60s, like I'm just chilling, right? So I could stand upright, I'm functional, but I'm literally dying on my feet. And uh, one of the most interesting things is like, I was actually waiting in line. You know, as I'm dying, standing up, there's a guy in front of me, he's paying with a car, he's taking a long time. And I'm like about to really, like literally just pass out on the countertop. And, you know, this is Florida, everyone speaks Spanish here, you know. And I'm just saying to the cashier lady, like I have a banana in my hand, some like fruity, coconut popsicle something something i'm thinking i have low blood sugar i don't know what's going on with me at this point because i'm like really disoriented but i'm just speaking to the cashier lady in spanish like ayudame ayudame like help me or whatever and you know it just seems like i'm very invisible i'm invisible to pretty much everybody in the world and i must have like a really quiet soft-spoken voice and this is not a very good thing when you're dying in real time you know a couple hours before that event, you know, I haven't called 911 in my life in a very, very long time. It's been shit, man, 10, 15 years or more since I dialed them three digits or whatever. I already know. So I don't really fuck with it, you know. But this particular time, as I'm dying, I called and requested a paramedic, right? Aside from it taking more than like a minute or something to connect the call or whatever, I don't mean to the operator, I mean just to like, connect to the service or whatever. I get on the phone and there's like a woman, I know it's a black woman and she wants to actually argue with me while I, <laughs> while I have over 200 something with this, with this condescending attitude, sir, you're gonna have to tell me the location of where you are, like over talking me with a loud booming voice. And I'm like, please help me. Paramedic, I need to have a over, oh, c- 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 uh, what they call that shit? Caffeine overdose from a rock star sugar free energy drink. Two of them, actually. I'm going to get in on that as another topic of a show, too, as well. But just for a little background of how all this happened, I'm on a very strict sugar free diet. 
I don't drink coffee, soda, nor do I really eat food really much at all either. So my system is pretty blank and flush. And two energy drinks full of an ungodly amount of caffeine and who knows what sent my system and blood pressure into shock. Pretty much killing me, knocking me out, blacking me out, and causing all sorts of uh, blood pressure related incidents or whatever. Now getting back to where people don't listen to me, right? Finally, I get the paramedics there and I'm telling the parrot, they check me out, you know? They're like, oh man, you're in better than perfect health. As I'm like almost dead a couple hours later, you know? Normal human blood pressure for most people is 120 over 80. That's pretty much, pretty much what mine read when the guys checked me out or whatever. My blood sugar was normal. I noticed they didn't take my thermometer or like internal temperature with the, you know, thermometer on your tongue or whatever. But they pretty much assessed me as being all right or whatever, and you know, they left, you know? Fuck. Because they were not listening to me. I say to the main paramedic guy there, hey man, I'm a runner, I got low blood pressure, whatever. He's like, no, no, you're fine here, see, 12080. Just for reference here, I ran 5Ks, I'm feeling better now, by the way, but like I ran 5K last night, and after running 5Ks, my blood pressure top number is 111. <laughs> when I'm just chilling around the house, it's like in the 90s. So when my shit says 120, alarm bells are ringing, and you know, I'm about to fucking die soon. Something, something's very wrong internally. I'm not used to having that kind of blood pressures or whatever. Whatever. So anyway, yeah, that, that's one of the main subtopics I'm talking about here. People do not listen to me or they choose to not listen to me and they choose to over talk me. You shouldn't do that when it comes to other people's body and their health because nobody knows their own body better than them. I don't care what school you went to or whatever. I think another part of the problem I have here is that a lot of people, this is a very big problem for me, all black people are not the same. Okay, I keep reiterating to you people that Ethiopians and black people are very different. My parents are both. I'm mixed half and half, but... You know, I am not the same as Leroy Johnson, okay? I say this all the fucking time. I'm not a basketball player. I'm not a football player. Count me out. I'm a long-distance runner. I do Muay Thai, and I like to fuck chicks and get massages and shit like that. But uh, so far as ranking or classifying me as far as, like, what most black men are or what's normal for most black men is not for me, Okay. That's a big problem. So I'm thinking this is why the paramedic guy was like, oh, he's all right. What a brother man like me. Good, good looking out, bro. Yeah, I know that kind of shit, you know. I hate this, you know. There actually aren't very many people like me on the planet. I've never met another black Ethiopian. I'd like to at some point, but such a rare uh, mix, you know, it's like an oil and water kind of thing. Seldom happens. So anyway, that's been my week. Yeah, just dealing with people that don't want to listen to me, people that don't want to overtalk me. And the other trippy thing I realized is like once I'm dead and gone, I literally like literally I shouldn't be making this show right now. I should be dead. There should be a fucking memorial with some balloons and shit and candles and Jesuses and shit or whatever. You know, motherfuckers want to put on the ground for me. Teddy bears, cookies and shit like that. All that shit should be on the ground in the parking lot of CVS here in Florida, where I pretty much died a couple days ago. Now, provided that happened and I wasn't able to calm my BP down enough and basically just reset everything, do a hard reboot. My body did a hard reboot on itself, basically, after blacking out. <laughs> if I wouldn't have done that, it's gone. This show wouldn't exist. So this show is actually a gift that you guys should really cherish, you know. I'm going to start telling you guys the real reason why I do all this shit, too. The Shimmy Show, the podcast, whatever. Long before YouTube, you know, more than like 20 years ago or something, I started doing this thing called the Shimmy Show with a little MP3, whatever, pocket voice recorder player or whatever. YouTube didn't even exist at the particular time. And I was just uploading it about my little behind-the-scenes thing where I'm doing my website, making a movie, trying to come back around... When was this, man? Before Facebook and all that. Like 2007 or 8 or something. You can look at this stuff on archive.org. And these shows are mostly just journals of, you know, myself, family problems, shit like that. And, you know, me being split up from my kids. 
losing everything and pretty much rebooting and starting over. I did all this stuff before moving to uh, the Dominican Republic and going on all these other adventures. And if you guys stay tuned for long enough, you're going to find out how and why a lot of my websites even exist. You know, because I can originally, I, you know, motherfuckers, they know me as Shimmy Cash, the you got fuck all them chicks, whatever, whatever. Actually, it was never actually my intent. This is just like a spinoff of going broke and trying to survive and live in third world countries and whatever. I'm making a living for myself after being pretty much crucified and annihilated or whatever and being pretty much broken, depleted for reasons I'll get into later, you know. That's the reason why there's a Native American Indian girl website. That's the reason why there's a Dominican girl website, whatever, whatever. Whatever country I happen to be in at the particular time, for whatever reason, I chose to make websites and try to make a living there or whatever. But originally it wasn't my intent. I mean, I didn't buy, I've been doing porn for like 20 years or whatever, but I never bought a camera until like 2009. Because I never really wanted to actually even be in front of the camera and shit like that initially. I'm just doing this behind the scenes webmaster stuff. I'm a family man, nerd, etc., etc. But my hand was forced into doing a lot of this stuff here. You know, in the name of survival, in the name of feeding myself and family and coming up and, do, you know, being me. Shit, I do what I do. No shame at all in it and no regrets, you know. I think I pulled it off quite well and miraculously for somebody with none or little to no resources or outside help. You know, so many people turn their back on me. So many people who I've just assisted from their feral states. Nowadays, they won't even let me piss in their toilet. You know, I got to go bathe in a fucking $50 bathtub shit from Amazon in the back of my own restaurant. Why? Well, people should answer those questions. Maybe people, you know what, here's, here's the deal here. And I'm going to name names and stories and all throughout this shit, like I say, because I should be already dead. These shows are going to haunt you niggers from the fucking grave if I do kick it over. So there, deal with it. So, you know, I had this, in, this is one of the funniest things of uh, last year, right? I get back up to Canada. This has all happened in the past year or whatever. I get up to Canada, I, uh, I rent a commercial office space in a medical building and I open up a little restaurant, a little Poke Bowl place called Pokey Pokey. It's closed down now, obviously, <laughs> you know, but I tried. It was my first attempt at actually selling food. Aside from that note, you know, me and the kids are running the business or whatever. Uh, this is where I live. It's got a little apartment in the back, whatever. There's bathrooms in the building, but there's no shower or bath facilities. I'm like, no problem. You know, I got a gym membership. I shower there. For a while, could shower at the baby mama's house until she started flipping out over ego-related issues for whatever reason. You know, she denies me to use her bathroom and shit like that. So I'm like, whatever, no problem. I eventually end up going to a truck stop there in town where you can have a shower for $7.29 and for an additional $5 you can do your laundry. This is part of my morning routine because I don't have a shower or whatever in the place. So I did this for a while, then eventually they were like, you're not a truck driver, even though I used to be and I have a CDL. And they're like, you're not an active truck driver or something, so you can't use our showers no more. <laughs> then I go get a gym membership and they close it down for like some, some COVID lockdown or some shit. So I can't shower there. So I end up buying something that looks like something you'd shampoo a dog or some shit in. And I'm filling it up in the sink in the back of my restaurant to have a bath in this fucking circus fucking dog washing bucket. You know, while people live in their homes that are government paid for, I can't even go and piss in their toilet. Even though I've bought this bitch like a quarter million dollar house before or something 20 years ago, and Lord knows how many cars, monies, and dollars have gone through this process for whatever reason. If you get to that point in the life where the father of your children can't piss in your toilet nor have a hot or cold bath because you have some ego problem, that makes you a bitch and you need to deal with that. And I don't apologize for that. You did some very bitch, unhuman type of behavior, Geneva. You kicked my mom out in the snow when it was a minus 40 snowstorm. Cold hearted. 
wouldn't co-sign for the immigration resident visas. Cold-hearted, butt-hurt, sore loser, huge ego. A lot of you might have heard some other shows about me going into the ugly thing. I'm going to go into the ugly thing, too. I do realize that I'm a very ugly person, okay? You can't beat me with the ugly stick anymore because I've received too much feedback and confirmation from the outside world. I am actually a very ugly individual because I'm uncommon to the eyes of this Western society. That's just the way it is. If you're too, if you're too, if you deviate too far from the norm of what everyone else is, you're not considered exotic. You're considered ugly. <laughs> right. So unless I go and move back to the Eastern hemisphere of the world or whatever, where more people are around my same height, build, head, facial structure, shit like that, I'm going to be considered an ugly duckling in the West or whatever. Yeah, and this regard, this is, <laughs> doesn't matter if you have 8, 10, 12 pack abs and look like a fucking ninja, et cetera, et cetera. You're still ugly, right? But I don't understand, like, how ego hurt can you be where you just start calling motherfuckers ugly? If the first digit of your weight starts with two or three, or really even one, in, <laughs> you know, but really definitely if the first digits of your weight starts with two or three, you are by definition ugly, unless you're over seven feet tall or eight feet tall or something like that, then it might make sense. But yeah, so I'm not going to get into the, 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 the ins and outs of calling other people ugly, but I do know that I am perceived as ugly myself, right? When I look at myself in the mirror, I see a cross of Wiley Coyote mixed with Sonic the Hedgehog back when he was brown before the treadmill accident and possibly a little bit of Santa's little helper from the Simpsons, you know, five foot nine, big fucking bug eyes, ribs you can play like a xylophone with big, huge fucking legs, small arms, Chun-Li type of legs, basically. I look like Wiley e. Coyote after he had the leg muscle vitamins, if you've ever seen that cartoon. But that's pretty much me. Yeah, and I accept the way I am, and I, I'm happy with the way I look. Shit. Whatever. There's a few things I'd modify, but in general, that, that's like the basic frame of me. I have what they call an endomorphic body, if you guys want to look that up. There's basically like four or five body types, I think, and endomorph, exomorph, whatever. And I just have basically a small frame type of build, Okay. I don't, I don't do upper body workouts, I don't curl, I don't do weights, bench press, none of that shit. I'm not interested in becoming bigger. There are no Ethiopian bodybuilders. I'm not trying to be a sumo wrestler or a boxer. I'm a runner with little arms that just goes fast, right? So that's me. So yeah, getting back to the ugly thing, man. A lot of people have called me ugly in my life. Mostly family and friends and people who love me. You know, they, say, they tell me shit like I've got a... Uh, uh, fish eyes. I've got bug eyes and fish eyes. By that I mean fish eyes means like, uh, say you have like a goldfish in the tank, you have to like walk around to the other side of the tank to see the other eye, implying that my eyes are spread far apart. Well, yeah, they are, man. What do you want me to do about it? You know, my height, I say I'm five foot nine. I think I'm actually five foot 11 or 12 or whatever, but I just like to underestimate shit, you know, all the time. What do you want me to do about things that are uh, out of my control is what I wonder. I'm not interested in <laughs> what the fuck. I'm not happy with my skeleton? Leave me the fuck alone, right? But the ugly thing hits deep again when people who you care about, you know, it's like, let's get it like this, okay? I, I got, you know, videos, YouTubes, all this dumb shit on the internet, right? Hundreds of millions of people watch my movies. I don't know these people when they say some dumb shit off the wall. Hey, nigga, fuck you. You ugly, this, that, 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 that. I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 whatever, nigga. But when the, the small handful of people in your inner circle, your family and so-called friends and loved ones that you take care of, when they take jabs at you and they tell you you're ugly, then it's going to hit, you know, take a little bit of impact and hit you back like, huh? What are you talking about? Hmm, it must be. At first, you might take, you know, me, me as a person, I like to always take things on a factual basis before I go on the emotional basis. So I say, if this person tells me this, it must be true. Well, otherwise, why would they do, 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 do? you know, whatever, right? 
But then I thought about it and I was like, you know what? I actually am ugly. It makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense to me now. I'm just an ugly motherfucker. I'm, un I'm undesirable. Therefore, <laughs> I'm, gonna I'm gonna be experiencing a whole lot of fuckery if I try to approach life in the manner of a non-ugly person, right? Now I've been, I'm going back to the baby mama thing here. You know, Geneva, she's called me ugly both in person and in writing on several occasions. And the fucked up part about that is you chose to have kids with me. So if I'm ugly, that means that you, the kids are ugly, basically is what you're saying. And everything that you do to me, you baby, everything, this is to every single mama out there, every baby mama out there, listen up. To every little bit of fuckery you do to your baby daddy, you are doing to your sons and daughters too, but most especially your sons. You know, when you say to me, I can't piss in your toilet and to go back to my little fucking car wash dog bucket and bathe, and you don't, there's no reason for you to do that or be like that. You know, <laughs> what does that leave me at? Other than the, and the only defense that this bitch has and any other bitch is to go and say like, oh, well, she's a woman, bro. You know, it's all she's all up in her emotions. And you might be right about that. I choose and elect to not deal with any of that shit. That's why I live alone and whatever. I'm going to get into this show real deep here. You guys are going to understand. I want you guys to understand why all this fucking porn's on the Internet to begin with. A lot of it's actually kind of unnecessary. It didn't have to be there. You know, I had a million dollars 20 fucking years ago before a lot of things and events happened, you know, so and that was without me picking up a fucking camera. A little bit too late to go back to that now, though. So, you know, you can thank a lot of these people who I'm mentioning for Indian girls and Tatikos and the Shimmy show. If you're dissatisfied with that on the Internet, I know who you can point the finger at, you know, how did my hand get forced to be in this position? Now, I do take full responsibility for my actions. This is one of the better solutions that I've engineered for myself to survive. But I wonder and question to myself, why would you throw me under the bus? I don't do anything to people. I don't fuck with people. In general, I'm a very calm. I got my own projects to do. Why do you want to ruin my life? Is your ego that important or fragile? You know? Would my life have been better if you didn't walk into it and disrupt and sabotage everything purposely and intently with the plan and a book? Wow. Tired of dealing with these piece of shit people, you know, and I'm happy that I'm alive to say all this shit. Good Lord, because had I died in the parking lot, I would have took all this shit to the grave. You know, my life has basically ended up in the position I'm in right now because of people that have continually kept shitting on me and giving me a raw deal. Yeah. So how about that? I hope you guys can still hear as I'm mopping. I like to talk as I mop. So before... Yeah, before I got this microphone, I must have looked like a madman walking around this house just mumbling and mopping and exercising. But see, here's the problem, as I'll mention again about the blood pressure when I first started this show. I guess, what is that called, that shit? PT trauma or PTSD is uh, what they call when you, I think that's what they call it, when you relive the traumatic event in real time or whatever so here's what's been happening lately and this is this is like about this whole incident was like last weekend so this happened like a week ago or whatever right since i've gotten better like i you know just have i got this uh heart rate blood pressure monitor watch thing or whatever I prefer to have this on my wrist for now, even though I don't I hate watches, but I, pr I prefer to have this on my wrist rather than the full size blood pressure cuff from CVS. I, I would be checking my blood pressure about six, seven, eight times a day. And yeah, I decided to just get the monitor. I have found, now again, let me, let me slow down here. Let me check my, check my number again, hold up. Yeah, so let me sit down up here up on the counter for a minute. I appreciate you guys who listen to this show, by the way. I don't, actually, I'd be surprised if you guys are still listening at this point. So for those of you who are still listening, I'm taking a break here sitting up on the countertop. 
<sighs> so anyway, ever since this incident, I've had like my baseline blood pressure has been very high. It's taken a couple days to climb down from, like I say, it was it peaked at like 240 something. <laughs> okay, my my normal for me is like 90, 95. Okay, currently I last checked it. A, oh Jesus, fuck! I just looked at it right now. 164 over 106 because I'm walking around. See, I gotta sit down now. Whatever, calm the fuck down. So doing these shows in podcasts is one of the few things that actually helps me to. Uh, lower my blood pressure. I have a lot of internalized anger and stress from external sources, mostly coming from people that have chosen to fuck with me. And it, it's cumulative, you know, they, they say, uh, what do they call it in China, whatever, death by a thousand uh, slashes or whatever. There, no, death by a thousand cuts, they say, is one of the most brutal forms of Chinese torture. You know, I think they just cut you with paper cuts like a thousand times, you know, or something to that effect. But yeah, it's like my point is all these little little punk bitch ass comments and shit like that. I brush it off like a duck on water or whatever, but it does cumulatively stack up over time. And you do got to flush and purge that shit out eventually. So now is not the time for me to hold on to my rage and this and that. I have a very, very short fuse. I'm not, I don't have the blood pressure capacity to hold on to your hate or your problems, or whatever. So this is just a very basic warning right now. As I say, my blood pressure currently 164 over 100 something. That's like almost 75 points above normal for me, okay? This means I have a very short fuse, meaning it's not a good time to fuck with me. It's not a good time to play games with me. <laughs> not that it ever is, but now, is, now would be the worst time for anyone out there to dare fuck with me. Because I have nothing to lose at this point here. I realize that a few ticks over and I'm a goner, you know? So, yeah, I'm just trying to calm down. And the way that I'm going to by doing these shows, like I say, whatever. So I'm just basically digging, digging through my life and seeing where, how I got to this point, who, who helped bring me to this point, and I'm going to just start talking about it. And it helps to make me feel better and to lower my own blood pressure so that I could survive. <coughs> Excuse me. So, yeah, I'll be damned. I'm trying to like, I'm not worried about sparing people's feelings or emotions lately, I guess you could say. I mean, just the other day, I actually went on YouTube and I unlocked all my private videos. There weren't very many of them. There were like maybe only like 10 of them or so. Generally, I publish everything, but there have been some points in my life where, um, you know, I felt like, oh, well, you know, that might have been so kind of disrespectful. That's your mom. That's your dad. That's your family. That's your this. I'm like, no, 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 no. You guys can censor me after I'm dead and gone. OK, whatever. I really suggest, too, by the way, that those of you who have. Uh, what do they call that? Not Google Drive. Um, if there is some way to download all of my shows from YouTube, it probably would be a good idea for someone to go ahead and do that. Eventually, these things all get purged or whatever. Like I say, I've been around before YouTube and I'll be around after YouTube, but you guys might want some of these shows to be saved when they do decide to finally nuke all this uh, channel, whatever. They don't like it when you keep it real and whatever, basically. You know, but you know, I say it's their platform, it's their hosting, and I'm utilizing it, so I pretty much have to abide by their rules or whatever, you know, so or host it on my own shit. So, but for the meantime, it's up here. They'll be, I'm saving mirror copies of all this on my external drive anyway. Hopefully, it doesn't get stolen this time or whatever. Yeah, so no more on that later, too. So yeah, man, all this stuff actually uh, helps to make me feel a little bit better. Yeah. I have been gotten back to running now. Uh, I've done, I, I'm capable of doing at least 90% of everything I used to do. I've lost a little bit of upper body strength. I actually lost during this whole uh, you know, body shutdown incident, whatever, I lost over eight pounds in two days which is really hard to do because I was like very, I mean, I'm like very trim at the moment and I'm kind of wondering where the eight pounds came from. It had to be just pure muscle or whatever. And just for reference, you know, I'm, I'm not on any steroids or testosterone or any of that shit. I've been off of that for a while actually, because I ran out. 
So I can't contribute any of this uh, body failure other than to the wild card of the white can Rockstar sugar-free energy drink with way too much fucking caffeine or whatever. So yeah, I, I just have a fragile system, I suppose, but I do that by choice. You know, I, I've been a big boy before. I've been to the 200, 300 pound club and all that shit and I ain't going back there. But plus I also realize I have more, you know, upward mobility and social mobility, et cetera, et cetera. Being a little lightweight runner guy doing my movies and whatever. So the future, as far as what the future holds for me, I'm just going to keep running and keep shooting movies. I'm going to keep doing more of what I've been doing. I'm not going to change anything at all. If anything, I'm just stepping on the gas and doing more and becoming more of the same shimmy, basically. You know, shimmy cash. Got to do what he do. Yeah, and I feel good about that. So, all right, I'm going to go get up here, uh, take a break, pause this, maybe roll myself a nice little joint and mop the floor again. I might have mentioned this before, is that um, here's the thing, right? And you guys are wondering why I'm going to be doing these shows for a very long time. I, I thought I mentioned this already about terror, not terror attacks, but uh, reliving the moment, okay? Reliving the moment of basically blacking out with high blood pressure, basically dying. I basically pretty much passed out in the car with the windows down or whatever, with the AC blowing on me. And I don't know how long I was out for. I do know that the cold AC on my forehead helped me out and that helped lower my pressure, but my brain did some sort of hard reboot during this whole process. I don't know how long I was out for. I remember when I did come to, I was uh, on the ground in the parking lot and I had to pee really bad and it pretty much helped pissing out the caffeine out of my system or whatever from that drink. And I slowly, as, as hours passed, started to feel better and it came down and I was able to get home, etc. But yeah, man, I, I was really fucked up over that shit. Sometimes I, I you know, I'll, I'll be trying to like, this has happened about, happens about once a day actually. Whenever I get relaxed or dazed enough, like in the middle of a run, or I'm trying to force myself to nap or force myself to sleep, I'll think about this event happening and my body goes into this like, I don't know how to say it, like, it goes into this phase like it's actually happening again in real time just by thinking about the events. Like almost like my body prepares itself to shut down as soon as I start thinking about the event. And it's like the, the event only creeps into my mind. It creeped into my mind once, like at, at around the three kilometer mark during a 5K run the other night. And again, today, while just kind of like spacing out a little bit, doing some pull ups and whatever, or trying to regain my strength. I read, I, I took a break in between a set and just started kind of daydreaming or whatever and thought about the whole thing in the parking lot the other day. And the event happened again, you know, just like a, what's it called? PTSD or anxiety, panic attack or whatever, where my body's, it just, my heart, not, I don't know if my heart starts racing. It's more like my blood starts pumping rapidly. And I just go into this state where I'm reliving the shit as if I was there, and this only lasts for about maybe 30, 40 seconds or whatever, and then I shake it off or whatever, but anytime I try to like chill out and relax or whatever, that happens. So I've been staying up all day and all night, all fucking week long. You know, the only thing I could, the only thing that actually puts me to sleep is running. If I go run long enough and hard enough, I'll tire myself out enough that I could pass out and go to sleep without incident. Other than that, it ain't happening. So I'm up all fucking day and night. You know, I think I went to bed at like 7 a.m. yesterday or this morning. Just a couple of hours of sleep. So you guys will be my new friends at night here until my number gets lower. I have another hobby too, actually. You know, since since uh, since this like brain hard reboot thing, it's like I, I'm kind of like doubting myself. So I'm trying to retest all my abilities again. Like I want to go swimming. Uh, I went to a video game arcade the last two days in a row, actually, to just, I'm kind of like testing my skills and seeing what's broken or whatever, because I don't quite feel exactly 100 and my blood pressure is not still totally normal yet. I'm like in the, when I'm chilled out, I, I've seen it go as low as 105, but I'm not satisfied with that and I don't feel like myself 100%. You know, so I need to figure out what limitations I have here. You know, I need to start practicing basic skills and 
drills, handstands, flips, shit like that, and just see what's, uh, you know, my body, my brain and body need confirmation. I have like a little bit of a disconnect going on currently. So yeah, I have a lot of shit to rebuild here and work out and sort out. All right, so let me go and take a quick break here. I'm going to pause this show. Hopefully this worked. I'm going to see if this new microphone thing works. All right, this is the Shemi show. Is this still going? How do I pause it? Whoa, 35 minutes. All right, we have peace and hair grease. You guys stay tuned for uh, part two of the show. Sorry, I don't have time to make it look all pretty and everything, but you guys can uh, do that shit later. Take care. <laughs>